Good evening, my beloved. I am so excited to be back with you again this week. I pray that you had a good week last week and hopefully you attended church somewhere. But if you didn't, I'm sure you read your word. In any case, tonight we're going to start with a series. Well, not really a series, just one lesson. And it's going to concern be concerned with how the, we receive the word of God and how dependent we are upon the condition of our heart as to how we receive it. So I know this is a very familiar passage of scripture in Matthew. It talks about the soil and the seeds. And so that's where our text will take us this afternoon. And I pray that you'll get your Bible and be prepared to go along with me as we talk about the condition of our heart and what it means to have good ground. But as usual, we want to start this evening's Bible study with prayer because we don't want to do anything without the Lord blessing and being a part of it. So let us pray. Father God, again, we come before you to say thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for blessing us with a good day so far and a good evening. Pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would be in our midst tonight as we go through this lesson. Pray, Heavenly Father, that the hearts of the hearers will be encouraged and, and, and encouraged to do what is right. Or if there's a need to improve, be encouraged to improve. Because, God, we know that you only want what's best for us. And that's why you gave us the word, God, so that we would have a direction for our lives. And now, God, as we get into this study, we pray for every family that's joining us this evening. We pray that they will understand the word and it will go forth with clarity and understanding to the extent, God, that we will all be better informed by the end of this lesson. And pray, oh God, that you would be glorified by what transpires here tonight. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, well, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. And uh, we're going to uh, be reading from verses 1 through 9, and then we'll complete it with verses 18 through 23. So you will need to have your Bibles because we're going to do this a little differently tonight. We're going to do some, we're going to uh, tell you what the situation is, then tell you the solution. So you'll need to keep your Bible there in Matthew uh, chapter 13. But again, I will read verses 1 through 9, and then we will go on to verses uh, 18 through 23. It's going to be interesting. And so, again, I, as usual, I'm, I'm sharing from the New King James Bible, but whatever translation you have, we're all on the same page. Okay, by way of introduction, we're going to talk about Jesus' parables and how he used parables to teach. And so, this is a parable that Jesus uh, used for a crowd of people, which would be more or less like us today, believers and people in church. Some of the some of the uh, parables he spoke only to his disciples, but these the, in in the uh, book of Matthew there are approximately uh, eight parables. The first four were for the general public, and the last four were for uh, the disciples. And so, approximately ninety percent of Jesus's teaching was done in parables. That and a parable is a comparison with of natural things that are used to explain spiritual things. And it, it's used to give a better understanding and to make things clearer for the hearer. And, 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 it, gives, and it gives a deeper impression. So again, a parable is a comparison which natural things are used to explain spiritual things. And it's used to give a better understanding and to make it clearer and give you a deeper impression as you hear it. And in this chapter, as I said before, this there are eight parables in, in this 13th chapter. And but the first four were given to the general public, uh, which like I said might be to, compared to us today would be the church population. But the last four were given to the disciples only. And so this parable, in this parable, we're going to discuss uh, in this lesson uh, the soil and the sower. And uh, in this lesson, that particular parable is called a foundational parable. Now, foundation means what everything is grounded on, everything is dependent upon, everything is set upon. When a builder gets ready to build a house, he puts the foundation first. That's what everything's going to rest on. And so every parable that follows this one, it rests upon the parable we're going to talk about tonight because 
if no matter how many parables go forth, if your heart is not receptive, then it doesn't do you any good. You won't receive the lesson that's in the parable. And so, um, uh, and the key part of it is that uh, the rest of the parables rest on this one. And so, and it has the reference to our ability to hear, but not just hear audibly, but to receive, and that's a key word, to receive what we hear in the messages that we have concerning uh, the kingdom of God. And so if it, 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 it's the parable about hearing, and it's not just audible hearing, but hearing with your heart, hearing with understanding, hearing with, with, a, with a desire to learn and to grow. And, but the only thing, if your mind and heart are not into it, if your mind and heart won't hear the word of God, then teaching in parables is just, it's meaningless. You'll miss the whole thing because your heart's not there. It's just like when you're in a conversation with someone and they're talking, and if you're not interested, it just sounds like it's mumbling to you. It, it really, you're really not receiving it. And so, uh, but Jesus used parables as a teaching method. And they were designed to, as I said earlier, to reveal spiritual truths in, 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 in such a way that those who wanted, key word, those who wanted to respond would understand and receive more in the lesson and more from the lesson. And But those who chose not to respond wouldn't uh, understand completely. And what they did understand, the little bit they did understand, uh, it would disappear. So it didn't do them any good. And so the thing of it is, in this in this text, uh, the so, what your heart and your mind are compared to good ground or good soil, if you will, because we're talking about planting the word of God, and it has to be planted in good soil. So the question for us to consider this evening is, what is the condition of your soil? What is the condition of your heart and your mind? Is it, is it, is it uh, pliable? Is it hardened? So this will give us reason, an opportunity to, to uh, explore and to, and, and to think about the condition of our heart as we sit in church on Sunday mornings and hear message after message after message. Is it taking place? Is it being beneficial? Or is it just words going over our heads? And so we're going to begin in our study. And as I said, we're going to stay in Matthew 13. So don't turn your Bible. And if there are other additional scriptures, you can just write them down. I will find them and read them because I want you to remain in Matthew chapter 13. Is that okay? Okay. So I'm going to read for you Matthew 13. Uh, and I'm going to read the entire verses 1 through 9. And then we'll go back and pick up and do some explanation. And it begins. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea, and great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he began to speak many things to them in parables. Remember, I've talked about what a parable is. It goes on to say, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell, among, fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth in, in the earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Uh, but others fell on good ground. That's where we want to be. Fell on good ground and yielded crops. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirty. But this is the, this is thirty, uh, some thirty. But this is where I want you to think about. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So what is Jesus talking about here in this parable? Again, he's talking about sow, sowing seed and seed, and we're going to explain what that means in verse number, verse number, uh, verse number, verse number three. It says, "Behold, a sower went out to sow." Verse 4, and he sowed, some seed fell, fell by the wayside. Now, the seed in this instance is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. And uh, it's the corruptible seed. It's the seed that in our everyday lives, the word of God has no ending. It, 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 it teaches us. It helps us. It drives us. It directs us. 
So what he's, in, in other words, he's saying he, pla- he, wanted, he planted some seeds. And it's important that the word that we hear Sunday after Sunday get planted in our hearts so that we can grow thereby and it will direct the way we live. And so the seed was the word of God. I'm going to turn to Colossians 1. Now, you don't have to turn. Just write it down. Colossians 1, because I want you to have these notes that you can go back and refer to them. Colossians 1, verses 5 and 6. Verses 5 and 6. Chapter uh, chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. And it says, uh, Colossians 1, 5 and 6. It says, Because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come to you as it has also into all the world and is bringing forth fruit, as it has also among you since the day you heard it and knew the grace of God in truth. So the word here, when it talks about seed, seed refers to the word of God. That's what we're listening to, the word of God. And then in verse number, the next, and also in verse number one, verse number three, it talks about a sower. It says, behold, a sower went out to sow. Now, the sower in this instance is Jesus Christ or a minister or a minister, whoever, you know, because ministers uh, give the word as well. And so the sower is, is Jesus Christ. And but it can also be applied, like I said, to ministers because the word of God, word of God is being sold, it's being given out. And so that means that as, as he gives out the word, we are receptive. But the, but the one who is doing the sowing, the one who's giving the word, one who's planting and giving the word is, is the sower in the parable. You follow me? And I want to read for you 1 Corinthians 3, 9, which lets you know that that uh, it also includes not only in this case it was talking about Jesus Christ, but it also includes ministers who have been given the charge to give out the word of God. So write this note down, 1 Corinthians 3 9. And it says, For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. And so that tells us that the sower then is our people ministers or Sunday school teachers even, you know, in, in our era now, who give out the word, who sow the seed. So that's who the sower is in this parable. I hope I'm not going too fast. And now the ground, which is important because this is where we come in. The ground, uh, it goes on to say, uh, behold, so went out to sow, and he sowed some seed, fell by the wayside, and birds came. But then, what are, you sow- what are you sowing into? You're sowing into ground. And the ground, or the soil, if you will, refers to the hearts of the hearers. It's, it's what we hear. It's how we hear what the, what, the word is, what the word is. So then we've already set the scene. So we know now that the, that the, the, the word of the seed is the word of God. We know that the sower is the person who's given the word of God or planting the seed. And we know the ground that is being planted into is our hearts. So that's the, that's the meat of this particular parable. And now we're going to explain it. And I want you to, um, again, stay in your Bibles because we're going to talk about, Jesus is going to explain this parable. He's going to tell what this parable means, okay? And so as we go through, Again, we talked about in verse number four, it says, and he sowed some seed and fell by the wayside and the birds came and devoured it. Well, if we look over to verse uh, number 19, we're still in, in, some, in, in, in Matthew 13. Look at verse 19. It explains that verse. It says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one, we know who that is, right? And then the wicked one comes and snatches it away, what is sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. That has reference to someone that comes possibly Sunday after Sunday, sit there and hear messages, but they don't affect him. Has no effect on their life, has no effect on how they live or or how they treat their fellow man. It's just something you do, you do out of habit because it's just not connecting to you. It's not having an effect. It's not. It, it's not uh, becoming a, a, 
a, a way of life for you because your heart has to be conditioned. Your heart has to be like pliable soil so that it will receive the word. Just just like when a farmer goes out to plant seed, he prepares the ground first. And many times preparing the ground means you're getting ready to plant. And I refer, I, I liken that to on Sunday mornings before you go to church, pray, you know, and get yourself ready to receive the word. And I know that's why a lot of churches, they have praise teams that will lead you in praise songs. And all of that is preparation, preparing you to receive the word. And if you want to know something, the worst day in the week uh, used to be in my house was Sunday morning. There would always be something. And so I just decided that on Sunday mornings, I would be very quiet. I tried not to answer any questions because I didn't want to get into any confrontation because I'm trying to get myself ready and prepared to either sow some seed or receive some seed. And so the devil gets really, 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 really busy when you're preparing yourself. But let me let me go to a scripture. Um, go to Jeremiah 4. No, no, I'll do it. I said I wasn't was going to have you do it. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 4, 3. And just write this note down. Uh, because it, it lends itself to what we're talking about, about preparing ourselves. You, have, you, you can't just go cold willy-nilly to church. You need to prepare yourself. You need to get ready so that when you get and arrive at the church, you already ready to receive the word. Your heart has been cleared of junk and, and mess and stuff, and you are going there strictly to receive the word of God. So Jeremiah 4, 3, and it says... Um, for thus says the Lord of the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and do not sow among thorns. So what that means is whatever is in your heart, anything that causes you to be hardened or cause you to be uh, disconcerted or cause you to be in a, in a mood before you get to church, get rid of that stuff. Because you're not going to be able to, to, to rightly receive the word of God if your heart is already filled with junk. So when it says break up that fallow ground, break, break up all that stuff. Get rid of all that junk that's in your mind. That's why on Sundays, try to be pleasant. You know, try to get, arrive at church in a good mood so you're ready to receive the word. And then turn also to, Ho and then I will turn, I keep asking you to turn. I will turn to Hosea chapter 10. Write this note down, verses tw verse 12. Hosea 10, 12. And again, it, it just it just brings back and reinforces what I just said about breaking up all that stuff in your heart that's going to cause you not to be a good listener. And Hosea 10, 12 says, Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. So we got to break up that stuff. Don't give place to anything that's going to disturb your spirit when you're getting ready to go to church for Bible study or Sunday school or hear a message. Get rid of it. You don't want to go in there with your heart hardened. Amen? And so now get back to the parable. Verse number six gives another, uh, 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 talks about stony places. Verse number five, it says, Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Well, what is that talking about? Uh, it means, and in verse number 20, but he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet, because he has no root in himself, it only endures for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the world, immediately he stumbles. That, that's like saying, that's like saying, um, I'll hear the word and I'm accepting the word and it sounds good for me. But as soon as I leave church and I get out among some of my folks who are don't, or don't go to church and then they start telling me that all that stuff I heard wasn't real and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I don't know why you go to church every Sunday. And because the word, you have no root the word just disappears. Now you you understood it and you received it at the beginning, but you 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 caused you've allowed people and their opinions to disturb the part you've heard. And so because there's no death in you, and then uh, when 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 David uh, wrote songs and he talked about. 
He talked about uh, going into the temple and all of that. He prepared himself. And that's what we need to do is to prepare ourselves so that when we get there, uh, no one will be able to take away what we've heard because our hearts are ready, is ready, it's pliable, we're ready to receive and we're ready to understand. But when it falls on 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 stony places, again, it means you 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 understand, you hear it, and it sounds good, but it says, but because it has no root, it endures only for a while, because when tribulation or persecution arises, because of the word, immediately he stumbled. Immediately you start challenging, well, maybe that's not what God meant. Well, maybe, 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 maybe he didn't, he didn't really, the, the, pre, the preacher didn't really say that. I mean, I know what he said, but there are no buts. When you hear the word, the word is the word. Turn with me. No, I'm going to turn. I Forgive me for keep saying that. That's just a part of my rhetoric since I do it so often. I'm going to turn to Matthew 11 and I'm going to read, write this note. Matthew 11, 6. And I shall read it for you. Matthew eleven six. 6, it says, And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. So Jesus is saying here that you are blessed when you don't allow what you've heard about him. You're not offended by it. And when you get out among your friends, they can't change your mind about what you've heard. Because you know who God is. And and, 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 but you have to shore up your faith, if you will, so that when you do hear the word of God, it takes place. It, 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 it gets in your spirit and it sticks. It stays there. And you're not going to allow uh, any, by any doubters to cause you to doubt what you've heard. Because, you know, we live among, we have people in our families, let's talk real talk here, who don't appreciate the fact that you go to church. They don't appreciate the fact that you are in Bible study. So they challenge you. And so our responsibility then is, again, to make sure our hearts are in a place so that when we hear the word, we are not going to allow naysayers to disturb our faith and what we believe. Amen. And again, the, our scripture says, blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. So don't let somebody pull you away from Jesus. And then the next one, uh, it talks about thorns. Verse number seven, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Well, let's see what the Bible says about thorns. Verse number 22 says, now he who received the seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he become unfruitful. Okay, so what is that saying? That's saying that, that's saying that, you hear the word, but because you have not become committed yet, you're still in an uncommitted state and you've accepted the Lord and you're saved, but you're not totally, but you haven't totally let go of the world yet. You still have one foot in the world and one foot in church and you, you want to accept God and receive God on your own terms. You, and, and you, they're quick to say, well, you know, God understands me and God knows my heart and he does. But when God gives you directions, he expects you to follow them. And the Bible says here that uh, the cares of this world, and then King James talks about the riches of this world, uh, uh, the deceitful of the riches choke out the word. And so your personal agendas then take precedence over the word of God. You've heard it. You're a Christian. You've been baptized. You've got all that going for you. But you still are in a lukewarm place because your agenda tops God's agenda. That, that's, that's when it's fell among thorns because it says he who received the seed among the thorns is he who hears the word or it receives it, hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. And so again, that's putting the world and with the world you choose to, to overlook what the word says. You choose for different reasons, not to embrace it totally because it interferes with your lifestyle. And but but when you are you my, my dad used to have a saying, it's whole hog or none. You can't you can't treat God's word like a smorgasbord. You go through uh, a a home. Well, I can't say that. Well, a, a place where you go and choose all your food. That's not how it is in the word. It's all of the word. 
But when it, when the, when it, when it talks about being among thorns, it, it's there, but it's being choked up by your opinions and the opinions sometimes of the people that you hang, about, hang around with. And sometimes, how, how many of you know that your disobedience, that your disobedience determines your destiny? So if you're trying to live right and do the things that God wants you to do, you got to get it together. Amen. And turn, if, no, Deuteronomy 11. Please, God, help me. Deuteronomy 11. And I'm going to read a scripture for you. So write, write this one down because this will give you some clarity on that particular scripture. Deuteronomy 11, what I want, 11, 16. It says, take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And how many of you know that we can turn things into gods? So be careful when you hear the word and don't let things come out and, and, and cause you to, to, to overlook what God says by what you think or what the general opinion is. Stick with the word of God. God gave us that word for a reason. And now the next one, uh, this, is, this, this is the one where all of us are aspiring to be. All of us want this. Verse number, verse number uh, 8 says, But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. What is that saying? Verse number 23, it says, But he who, the explanation is, But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. And so, then if you if it falls a gun, a, a gun among good soil, then that means committed Christians, and it represents the heart of those who hear the message, understand the message, understand the value of the message, and follows it to the best of their abilities. Does that mean we're going to be perfect? No, but you you you're walking in the area of aspiring to be better and more mature but you've heard the word and you 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 allow it to take root in your heart and uh and you're not afraid of being ostracized by those who are not where you are and want to make you think well man all that ain't necessary you don't want to let those people to to come into your life and disturb your faith in god and so we have to understand then that good soil are those of, of, of us. And I can say us because I'm, I'm included in the good soil group. And I want you to be too. And I truly hope you are. Is Are those who, who it represents the heart of those. Remember, it, it, the soil talks about your heart and what you believe and, and how you accept and receive the truth of God's word. Amen. And so the heart of those who hear the word understand the value of the word. Key word, value. God's word is valuable. Uh, the, understand the value of the word and you follow it to the best of your abilities. That's good ground. And as a result of that, you, 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 you bear much fruit. Now, I'm going to take time to tell you, this word is not saying anything. It's not lending itself to the idea that there's something wrong with riches and having finances. It's not. It absolutely is not. There were a lot of rich people in, in the word. God's not saying it's, it's bad to be rich. What the, trip, what the scripture is saying is when you allow it to take precedence over God, then it becomes problematic for you. But the idea of it and the fact of it, there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing. So don't, don't let anybody tell you or use this scripture because I've heard it mis, misused in this way. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you being financially able. Nothing. But it's, it only becomes problematic when you put that above your relationship with God. Then for you, it becomes problematic. Amen? And so what, where, where does that leave us? Verse 9 says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. So what Jesus is closing by saying, now that you know, see, when you know better, my mama used to say, I expect you to do better. And so now that you know, you have to understand the clarity of, and, and it gives you reason to examine yourself and realize, well, how, what do I do with the word when I hear it? How do or I or do I even apply the value and the truths of God's word to my life? Do I allow it to be a guide for me to teach me how to walk as a Christian? Do I allow it to help me make better decisions? So, so what's your soul like? Because in this scripture, as we get ready to close, you got to ask yourself, 
what kind of ground represents your heart? And it's a personal question. I have to answer for me. You have to answer for yourself. And so, the, uh, remember, we talked about four kinds of ground, four kinds of soil. Hard and unacceptable to God's word. Then there's rocky and stony that has no root. And the word can't be rooted and grounded. And then there's a thorny, which means you're uncommitted because you're encumbered by wrong desires. And then there's the good soil, the soft, pliable soil that's ready to receive and understand the value of the word of God. And you're doing your best to live by the word of God. So that's our lesson tonight. I hope you understand it because it's important that you know where you are in your walk with God. And, and not to compare yourself to anybody else. How many of you know, as I close, that your, 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 your relationship with God is personal? It's not how, how well your mama did, uh, big mama, your daddy is not, none of that. No, no. Because the Bible says that all of us are going to have to stand before God and give an account of ourselves individually. So get yourself together. And if this applies to you in any way, it's, 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 designed, it's designed to help you to think about where am I in my walk with Christ? Is there need for improvement in any area in my life? And if there is, jump on the wagon, start the improvement so that you can represent God the best you can. Because we are made in his image and we are perfectly capable of being all that he desires us to be. So check your soil and determine what kind of soil you have. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you again for this night. We thank you for this lesson, Father, and I pray that it would give some thought to those, to the hearers, that they would give some examination, personal examination, to truly, within themselves, find out what condition their heart is in. And if they're hearing the word, your Bible, your word says, be hearers of the word, be doers of the word and not hearers only. So God, we all want to be doers. Help us to strengthen our heart, strengthen our faith, and rely on you and know that your word is truth and thereby we are guided by it. We are directed by it. You love us through it. So thank you, God. Bless the word as it went forth and I pray, God, that you were glorified by what we presented tonight. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night.